Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and thank you once again for checking out another episode of the Celebrity Jobber Podcast, which, by the way, on the Apple Podcast Music Podcast charts, this is the number one podcast in the country. Yeah, this podcast isn't necessarily about just musicians. It's about celebrities in general and what may have happened to them if not for their big break. Henry Winkler, a.k.a. The Fonz, was my guest on episode 34 back in May of 2023. Here's a clip. What What about school? Did you, uh, you had trouble in school, but was there, you know, college? Were you trying to... I went to college. Where'd you go? I only got into one. I got into Emerson College. And then I don't know exactly how this happened, but I got into the Yale School of Drama. Wow, that must have been that. Was that? Do you consider that like a maybe a big break in the career of Henry Winkler? No, but it, it what it did was it it, it uh, solidified the foundation on which I uh, based the, you know uh, the, my entire career. In this episode, we talk a lot about what Henry Winkler is doing these days. Not to mention. His kids are kind of in the business and how he works with some of his kids today. It's really interesting. Plus, I'm a huge fan of Rocky, and he played a big part in Sylvester Stallone becoming a household name. We're going to ask him about that as well on this episode of Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber Podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Mr. Winkler. Oh, my God. I love your name. You do? Well, that's that makes... Yeah, I mean, you know, if I wasn't the Fonz, I'd be, I'd be the big Z. I'd be Zito. <laughs> that's a, you know, that's probably one of the most incredible sound bites I ever got. If you don't mind, I'm going to play it uh, for uh, people on the radio for the rest of my life. <laughs> okay. So, man, it's it's been a little while since we talked, and and I'm so right. um, I'm so intrigued by um, your life and right. and where you are now, um, and it's very interesting. But you know what? Can I can I just say one thing about that? Please. I myself am in shock. I mean, uh, October 30th, I'm going to be 79 years old. I have a children's book coming out. My memoir comes out in the paperback edition. I'm on an episode my son, Max, hired me for on American Horror Stories. I'm going up to Winnipeg to be in a movie with Bob Odenkirk. I am overwhelmed that I'm still on eight cylinders. It's unbelievable. And do you feel like you're you're running too hard? Do you ever be like, oh man, no, I gotta slow down? No, I don't. There is plenty of time, Big C, to <laughs> slow down. <laughs> Man, I, I'm so. Uh, I mean, look, you, you, your parents came over from Germany when you were a very, very little kid, and your your father, he made, it, it, he he formed a company in Germany. Could you tell us a little bit about what he did in Germany and how he he brought that over into the U.S. My father and mother lived in Berlin, and he imported and exported wood. And he worked all over, and he trained on a forest in the Carpathian Mountains in Poland. And he wanted me so bad. He wanted me to take over the family business. But I'm telling you, I don't know how. I always wanted to be an actor. He's in the wood business now that he's in the States. Buying selling wood. And how did acting come about for you? I you, don't know. It just happened. You know, I don't know. I, if people were born to do something, I was born to try and be an actor. I, I had no plan B. I didn't. I, 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 I just knew that this was my path, and I never let it out of my brain. And I will tell you, for everybody who's listening, people told me I would never achieve. People told me that your grades are so low, uh, you're not going to make much of yourself. And I just couldn't believe that was true. Man. And I never let go of my dream. And here I am in 2024 talking to you. Look at all this stuff that uh, that, that you're telling me that, that's coming up, which I want to talk to you a lot about your new children's book. Can you answer this question yeah. for me? I'm such a huge yeah. fan. I'm such a huge fan of Rocky. And I know that you and Sly were in the Lords of Flatbush. When that whole Rocky script came about, can you tell me, like, he... he laid it on you, right? You you actually yeah, helped okay. him or tried to steer him in a different direction, no? I did. I did. So this is what happened. 
<clears throat> he drove out here uh, with his first wife, Sasha, and their a boom mastiff that took up the entire black back seat of the car. This was the biggest dog I've ever seen with more drool. He could have filled a pool with his drool. I, honest to God. That is, I, I had to get a snorkel to get in the back seat to get that dog out. <laughs> so he drove to California, and he stuck on Sunset Boulevard. He calls me, he says, Henry, I'm stuck here. On, on, you got to come get me. All right, I get in my car. I go get him. I get all his stuff out, his beautiful wife and the dog. I, I try to cover uh, my back seat with plastic garbage bags. And then I put the dog in there, take him to his apartment. He gives me a script. I take that script to ABC. I said, here it is. This is a, a great guy. We were in a movie together. They buy it. Wow. I go back to Sly. I said, here's the good news. All the money is yours. They want to they wanna change writers. And they don't, don't, don't let them do that to me. <laughs> I go back to ABC. I said, okay, funny, huh? this is so lovely. You're wonderful people. Here's all the money. I need the script. Oh, no. Said, we don't do that. I said, I know. I know you don't do that. All sales are final, man. Time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. So I, thank goodness I had a little juice because I was the Vons. I finally convinced them, cajoled them. I don't know what I did, but I got the script back. I gave them the money, went back to Sly. I said, Sly. Here's your script back. A year and a half later, Rocky. Unbelievable. Uh, it's a great, great story. And that dog is Butkus, isn't it? From the, oh, from the movie. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> um, he loved that dog. Oh, I heard all about him. Such a huge fan. I wanted to talk about your children's book. You're so into children. Is it, is it because your, your kids, when you became a grandfather, when did writing no, children's no. books? Go ahead. 2003, I couldn't get hired because I was the Fonz and I was typecast. I went to a friend. He said, hey, write books for children about your learning challenges, your dyslexia. I said, I can't. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> he said, I'm going to introduce you to Lynn Oliver. And our 40th children's book is coming out on the 13th of October. It is called Detective Duck. This little duckling lives on a beautiful pond in New Hampshire. And she is not only dreaming about being a detective, but she uses her detective skills to figure out environmental problems that are destroying the pond. She wants to keep it beautiful for all of her friends. Unbelievable. And so Detective Duck, the case of the missing tadpole, comes out. And we figured that humor is the, uh, the gateway to reluctant readers. And these, there are four, they're going to be four detective ducks. They are for emerging readers. They are heavily illustrated by the great Dan Santat, who is like a dream. And uh, American Horror Stories returns with uh, all five new episodes. You are Dr. Nustrum, and it's a part of Hulu's Huluween celebration. My son, um, is now, when he was 10, I took him to the movies. He said, I want to be a director. I said, okay. He's now 43. He's a director. And he runs um, several shows as executive producer for Ryan Murphy with his uh, oh, co-executive, yeah. Alexis. Okay. So now he gets to direct when he wants to. And he hires me as an actor on his show. My son has hired me. That is so cool. And the director of it is a kid who was in his class at USC who spent most of his time in my house during school eating us out of house and home. I'm working for these two guys. You're kidding me. And is this the same guy that just did the uh, Menendez uh, brothers? Uh... That's Max. That's Max. He did episode six, which is brilliant. I brilliant. Think. Oh, so great. And did he, they also do the Jeffrey Dahmer Dr. Seuss? Uh, uh, he just did um, Grotesquery. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Which is on. Uh, and uh, for the first time, you will see Travis Kelsey as an actor who is surprisingly wonderful. 
Wow. I got to tell you, it's just always a pleasure talking to you. October 15th, FX's American Horror Stories returns, and you'll be able to see Henry Winkler star as Dr. Nostrum, and not to mention his new book, Detective Duck, The Case of the Missing Tadpole, comes out everywhere October 22nd. Matt Fonz, it's always a pleasure, man. Love you, brother. Thank you. I just want to say, my doctor, Dr. Nostrum, is nauseating. Really? You're playing a sick yeah. puppy? You're a real sick puppy, yeah, aren't he's you? He's a sick puppy. He's a sick puppy. <laughs> Thank what a pleasure. You. Henry, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. He's such a cool guy. Henry Winkler, my guest this week on Celebrity Jobber. If you forgot, back on episode 34, I asked what his big break and his first job was. Here's what he had to say. Could you remember and tell me what your first job was? My very first job was um, a, 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 an under five, which means I had less than five lines on As the World Turns. Really? So your very first job was actually in the business? Yes. My, now, my very first job was working for my father, which I hated, uh, <laughs> because he wanted me to take over the business of importing and exporting wood. Yeah, I would say that wasn't wouldn't be as exciting as the world of no. film. No. Oh, wow. So, we're, yeah, working with Dad is never, never fun for anybody, no. I think. What do you think your big break was, Henry? Like, you know, I know I that... Know what my big break was. What was it? Uh, absolutely, the Fonz introduced me to the world. I mean, that. What, how did you get that part? How did it, that all come to be? I went into, like everybody else, and auditioned. And uh, Gary Marshall said, I want a six-footer, and I got a five, six-and-a-half-footer. <laughs> and, and he fell in love with you? You were, you were the guy? I had to, he, he gave me the job. I would uh, urge you to go back to episode 34, with uh, my first interview with Henry Winkler and uh, check out how his family came over from Germany escaping the Holocaust. It's a really great story and uh, he's a great guest. Again, I, I thank him. I thank you for making this the number one podcast in the country on the Apple Podcast music charts. We've talked to a ton of musicians. Brian Johnson from ACDC, Joe Perry from Aerosmith. Just had Kenny Wayne Shepherd, guitar virtuoso on a few episodes ago. Jacoby Shaddix from Papa Roach, Brent Smith from Shinedown. I urge you to go back and listen to some of these. Plus, comedians and other celebrities, what would have happened to these people if not for their big break? And what was their first job ever? Who knows, they could have been a regular, ordinary nine to fiver, just like you and me. All past episodes are up on celebritygobber.com, streaming on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe, would love a five-star rating, and leave a review. So fortunate that the Celebrity Jobber podcast is the number one podcast in the country on the Apple Podcast Music podcast charts. Yeah, look it up. I look forward to the next episode. And with that, I'll see you next week. I'm Jeff Zito.